Come on, can we thank God? Can we be real hearty in our thanks to the Lord today? Come on, church, is that it? Let's give it up for the Lord. Amen. You're wonderful. You're glorious. You're powerful. Amen. Welcome to South Shore. All right, so uh, we're, we're warming up a little bit here today. Just turn to your neighbor. Just say, did you lose a little weight? Just tell him. See, you're looking good today. You know, you can never go wrong with that one, right? You look thinner. Well, thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we're glad that you are here. Very special guest today, uh, Pastor Oscar Mumba. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can clap. That's great. He's from Zambia, Africa. Uh, amazing man of God. I know many of you have been fasting. I, I broke my fast yesterday, 27 days on raw vegetables. Okay? So, so I broke my fast. This is not the way to break your fast normally, but I broke my fast on biscuits and gravy. Can I get an amen for biscuits and gravy, somebody? I never know you could see the face of Jesus in biscuits and gravy. Jesus, anointing, praise the Lord. God is good. My stomach hurt after that too. Don't break your fast that way normally. I just had a little, a little hiccup back, back on the plan. I want to invite you to Wednesday noon prayer. Every Wednesday at noon, we pray. We've been praying for 10 years. We've been gathering. There's a repository, 250, 300 people that are coming and in body to pray. And I want to be so bold as to ask you to actually plan, plan your week and see if you could take that hour from work. Just ask your boss, hey, can I, can I go and I pray? A church that prays really disappoints the devil. It really, really disappoints his plans. It changes our lives. If you absolutely can't make it physically, log on. We'll, we'll see you online. There are about 1,500 people watching uh, online. God is doing amazing things. When we pray, we get to lose ourselves and find him in the name of Jesus, okay? So the invitation's out there for you. Also, next week, uh, I'm going to be teaching. I'll be back uh, with you for the services, and, and, and next week, very important, important message. I'm teaching one blood, one Bible. One blood. We're all made of one blood, right? Out of one blood, God created all the nations of the earth. Every man, woman, and child come from one blood. We're all one blood. And if we get this, we'll get over hurting each other. One blood, and we have one Bible. One blood, one Bible, okay? Now, uh, uh, so that's just a little, little tip for next week. Let's get ready. In the name of Jesus. All right, can you just give a warm, warm welcome, crossing welcome both campuses to Oscar Mumba. Pastor Oscar Mumba. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Father, thank you. Oh, so, thank you. I see you at South Shore too. What's up? I see you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you. We, uh, we bless you. We receive such an impartation and grace. Thank you for uh, uh, like an apostolic father who comes to just be a blessing, to, who comes to impart grace and wisdom. And it's so good. And part of the reason why it's so good is, are two things, because he spends so much time with you. The second reason, it's un-American. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Um, and, and so we receive that in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Wow, how are you doing? Oh, you look good. You look strong. You look anointed. You look like somebody who just had an encounter with Jesus Christ. If I were to be given an option to choose between where I come from and where I am, I know that choice would be very easy. All I'll do is get everybody here and go with them where I come from. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just really thank God for my pastor and my friend, Pastor Greg. He's been a wonderful man of God, and just watching how God has used him and how God is using him inspires me to thank God that there's really hope for the American church. If you don't appreciate him, I'm going to teach him how to go to Africa and how not to come back here. <laughs> Praise God. I can tell you something beautiful is happening at the crossing. Something good and powerful is happening in your life. And this morning I want to speak to you like a pastor. I'll come to you as a person that 
has been called into the office of a pastor. My grace and my gifting is to be a pastor. God has called me to nature people, to raise people. And that's what gives me fulfillment. So I will speak to you as a pastor. Do you receive me as a pastor? Praise the Lord. I mean, we've had evangelists speak to us, apostles and prophets and so forth. Let me speak to you as a shepherd. Acts 1, verse 4 to 8. I'll speak and we're going to uh, have a moment to just allow the Holy Spirit to just come through. Acts chapter number 1, verse 4 to 8. The Bible reads, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, you've heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they came together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons, which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I'll speak on the subject, the Spirit-filled church. The Spirit-filled church. Does that sound clear? All right. Now, when we read this passage of Scripture, we see the, the importance or the value that Jesus places on the Holy Spirit. He's telling his disciples what they really need. And we see his emphasis to his disciples uh, was a sign of what kind of a church he was expecting to see. And before Jesus was crucified, he spoke to his disciples about the Holy Spirit. He introduced the Holy Spirit in John chapter number 14, spoke about the Holy Spirit in chapter number 15, in John chapter number 16. And just after his resurrection, he also spoke about the Holy Spirit. And then at this moment, he was about to return to the Father. He was supposed to ascend into heaven. And he picks one of the subjects he had taught his disciples in three years. I mean, Jesus taught too many things. He spoke about prayer. He spoke about forgiveness. And he also spoke um, about many other uh, uh, valuable subjects. But the last thing he teaches his disciples is the importance of the Holy Spirit. And he tells them that the Holy Spirit will give them power. The Holy Spirit will make them witnesses on his behalf. I believe that Jesus is praying to the Father right now for a spirit-filled church. He is praying for spirit-filled believers. His desire right now is that we be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I know that in this service right now, there are many uh, women and me men and women who are already filled with the Spirit of God. But I believe that we need God to fill us to overflow. And we see this very, uh, we see the same emphasis from the Apostle Paul uh, from the book of Romans all the way, he begins to teach the church. He begins to teach the established church on how to walk, you know, in the spirit, how to relate with the Holy Spirit. He tells them, do not grieve him, do not quench him, enjoy fellowship with him. And he goes on to teach about the gifts of the spirit. He talks about how to use them. He talks about their benefit. If the Holy Spirit was important to Jesus and Paul, then he is important to you and I. And by the time I am done, I believe that you and I will all be filled with the Spirit just as Jesus and also as the New Testament church was filled with the Holy Spirit. After Jesus is taken away, in Acts chapter number 2, verse 1 to 4 there, we know that scripture very well. 
uh, the believers obeyed Jesus when he said, don't go away until you are all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they went to the upper room and stayed in uh, for days waiting for the promise of the Father. And in Acts 2, uh, verse 1 to 4 there, the Holy Spirit comes. And as the Holy Spirit comes over the room, we notice three things. The Bible says that as they were waiting in one accord, there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind, you know, uh, that filled the room, like the sound that came and filled the room. And, you know, the whole room was filled with the Holy Spirit. There appeared on each one of them tongues as of fire. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. So three things. Number one, the Holy Spirit filled the room. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he inhabits the place where believers gather. This room right now is full of the Holy Spirit. He is right where you are. He's closer than your own breath. The Holy Spirit filled the room. The second thing is that the Holy Spirit filled everyone in the room. There was no exception. So every person who is where the Holy Spirit is, is a candidate for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He is not for a special few, for a certain group. He is for whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus. So where the Spirit of God is, everybody can experience him. So he filled the room and filled everyone in the room. And thirdly, the Bible says everyone who was filled with the Spirit spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit, you know, enabled them. So he filled the room, filled everybody, and everybody began to speak in other tongues. So the Holy Spirit can give you his ability of communicating to God and his ability on how to communicate to the world. That's what he does. It is a, a, a privilege that he gives uh, to those who believe in the Lord Jesus. So the infilling of the Holy Spirit in relationship to the church is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So he, what he does is that he baptizes the believer, empowering them, empowering them to preach the gospel effectively and also live pure lives. The Bible says he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And the purpose of the fire was to burn the chaff. So he brings holiness. He brings purity. And also he brings a deeper devotion uh, to the believer. We become more devoted to the Lord. We love him more. We become hungry for more of him. Now let me give you just three effects of the infilling of the Holy Spirit or the coming of the Holy Spirit over the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit over the believer. The first thing is that he transforms us to Christ-like or Christ-like believers. He brings a transformation. We begin to change from immaturity to maturity. There is a, a deep work that is going on right now where the Holy Spirit is producing fruit that calls us to reflect the nature of Christ uh, in our everyday life. He begins to initiate change. Right now, God has begun a deep work inside you and I to cause us to begin to move away from our old self and move into a new image where we can become the reflection of Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul was talking about. So it means that a spirit-filled church or a spirit-filled gathering is an environment for transformation. There is a change from one degree of glory to the other. Don't give up because you failed, because God is not done yet with you. Let's move to the second thing. So he transformed, his work is to transform. The second thing is he brings freedom from all kinds of bondages. The Holy Spirit ministers freedom. We remember the same verse, 2 uh, Corinthians 3, 17 tells us where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
the Holy Spirit wants to overcome the works of Satan and anything else that limits us. He is there to bring freedom. When Jesus was anointed of the Spirit, he went back to his church. And the Bible says in Mark 1, uh, verse uh, tw 21 to 27, that he got into the church and there was a man there who was oppressed of the devil. And the moment the devil saw Jesus, they screamed out and said, Jesus, we know who you are. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. It means that before Jesus was filled with the Spirit, the devil didn't know who he was. Maybe. But at this moment, they knew who he was. And Jesus drove the Spirit out. And he claims in Matthew 12, 27, that the driving of the Spirit was the, I mean, the driving out of devils was the work of the Holy Spirit. So I believe as the Holy Spirit comes upon us, he brings freedom from the bondage of sin. Sin shall not be a master over us. Our flesh will now begin to be crucified. It's no longer the desires of the flesh, but the longing of our spirits. So sin begins to give in so that our spirits may reflect the righteousness of God. More than just that, the Holy Spirit breaks the bondage of Satan. Satan wants to keep us captive. He wants to box us in. But Jesus Christ has come to set us free. So you cannot be spirit-filled and be bound. The Holy Spirit brings freedom from the oppression of Satan. Every generational curse is broken. Every work of the enemy is destroyed. But also, he brings freedom from the bondages of life. The traumatic experiences, the rejection, and all the painful experiences that have caused us to withdraw from life. The Holy Spirit comes to work in us, to cause a work of maturity where we begin to, you know, we are being transformed. Instead of being conformed to our past and our environment, we are transformed into this kind of person whom the devil cannot uh, boss around. And I pray for you that may the Lord set you free and you will be set free. Quickly, let me go to the last part of uh, my teaching this morning where I believe you will get a lot of it. So he brings transformation. He brings freedom. Thirdly, he brings empowerment. The Holy Spirit brings empowerment. So he empowers the believer to minister to the Lord or he empowers you and I how to minister to the Lord first and then how to minister to the body of Christ and how to minister to the world. So a spirit-filled church, a spirit-filled believer is one that is empowered on how to minister to the Lord minister to other believers and minister to the world. And this morning, the Lord will come to us and empower us in these three realms. He is there to bring fellowship between God and us. The Holy Spirit wants our relationship with God to be sound. He wants it to be deeper. He wants our relationship with God to be the greatest relationship we'll ever have. May I say this to you, that our initial calling is how to minister to the Lord powerfully. God has called you to minister to him powerfully. Acts 13, we are told uh, concerning the church that as they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said. So God wants us to learn how to minister to him. How does this happen? He baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter number uh, 2 there, we see when the Holy Spirit came uh, upon the church, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says they began to speak in other tongues. So speaking in tongues or having a supernatural prayer language is a way of communicating to God intimately. When God wants to have an intimate walk with you. He teaches you how to communicate to him intimately. First Corinthians chapter number uh, 14 there, we are told from verse 1 going down to 4, Paul is trying to teach the difference between tongues and prophecy. 
He says this, that the one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but speaks or utters mysteries to God. He speaks to God in an intimate way. So when God fills you with his spirit, he is literally calling you into a deeper relationship with him. And as we begin to pray in other tongues, we are giving ourselves capacity to, communi to communicate to God in a powerful way. One of the disciplines that I have worked with over the years is to spend time praying in the spirit. Spend time praying in tongues for hours. I used to live with my, one of my relatives and she would watch me pray in tongues three hours without stopping. And I would pray in tongues, you know, and communicate with God. I would walk on the road or get into uh, shopping malls and people with evil spirits would begin to manifest. Why? It is because if you communicate with God intimately, what is in God will find its way in you. So he that speaks in other tongues, the Bible says, edifies himself. He builds himself. His faith is built up. Jude 20 says, build up your most holy faith by praying in tongues. So do not be afraid, you know, when you begin to see others speaking in tongues. They are communicating with God and God is also doing something deeper in their lives. So I mentioned about the baptism of the Holy Spirit causing us to learn how to minister to the Lord powerfully. So tongues could be used to minister to the Lord. How? The first is through intercessory prayer. Romans 8, uh, 26 to 27 there, we do not know how to pray. Verse 27 tells us that the Holy Spirit makes intercession on our behalf. So a person praying in the Spirit, at times it is the Lord that is praying through him on behalf of somebody who needs help. So when you begin to sense the Lord convicting you to pray in the Spirit, He is trying to use you to save somebody's life. I remember a time, one time around 5 a.m., the Lord woke me up and I began to pray in tongues. And I was praying in the Spirit. I wanted to pray with my understanding, but I, I couldn't. I kept on praying in tongues. And then I had the name of one of the wives to, our, uh, to one of the elders in the church. And I began to pray for her. And then at the end, the Lord said, call her. So I phoned her and I asked her if she was doing well. Then I said, I want you to come and see me. Now, I want you to know, at this moment, somebody had tiptoed into her room and switched the drugs she was, get, she was taking. And the person wanted to murder her. They switched the drugs. And then after speaking to me, she opened the, 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 the case that contained the drugs. And when she looked at the drugs, they were different. And she went to the hospital and says, I don't know what has happened, but these drugs are different. And the doctor told her, had you taken these drugs, you would have died instantly. Tongues are used for intercession. God wants to baptize you because he has a world to save. He has a believer to minister to. God will baptize someone today because he wants to raise you as an intercessor for your household, an intercessor for the church, an intercessor for the city. And then secondly, tongues are used to minister to the Lord in praise and worship. Acts 2.15, it says, when the Holy Spirit first came for the first time, the people that came from different places heard the disciples magnifying the works of the Lord. Peter, in Cornelius' home, Acts 10 from 44 there, the Bible says he heard the household of Cornelius praying and magnifying the works of the Lord as well. But it is Paul who says, we can, I can sing with my understanding, I can also sing with my spirit. He was talking about speaking in tongues. And he talks also about how to use tongues in praise and thanksgiving. And then he tells the Corinthians to speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. 
It's my prayer that our worship will now begin to, to, to be enhanced and become the melody that God wants to hear. I don't know about you, there are times you wake up, there is a song in your spirit that you want to sing. That's the same thing that happens with God. There is a song he wants to hear from you. It may not come from here, it will always come from your spirit. It will not come with your understanding, it will come with melodies of your supernatural prayer language. Like Paul, I sing with my spirit. That's the kind of worship I believe the angels uh, offer up in heaven. And I've been enjoying the worship from our worship team here. You could sense the presence of the spirit behind the worship. The first, I have seen uh, six dead bodies come back to life. The first one came, you know, the first person I prayed for who was dead was actually when I was a worship leader. And I didn't know how to pray for the dead, but I knew how to lead people to, in worship. So I said, well, why not just lead the dead man into the presence of God? I just held him and did what I knew better. Sang peace like a river and began to just worship the Lord. The next thing I felt was the cold hand becoming warm. When I opened my eyes, when I opened my eyes, the whole body that was called dead was sweating all over. This was almost a, that, that was a man who was almost 52 years old. Our worship is as powerful as the spirit that flows and offers it to God. We could use tongues also to minister to one another in the church, but this time differently. The tongues will generate revelation or activate the gifts of the spirit. So in the church, as we begin to minister to one another, the Holy Spirit will begin to release revelation, visions, prophecy, teachings like you're listening right now, tongues and interpretations of tongues. I remember the last time I was here at one time, that would be 2016, uh, we were having an incredible moment, and one of the pastors just went in a tongue, and I began to get the interpretation, and somebody else got the interpretation. I believe that these gifts are coming back to the church. So not only do we have tongues and interpretation, Paul says when you gather, when you come together, pray in tongues and pray with your understanding. That's what he said. He said, don't just pray in tongues, but I, I instruct you or I propose that you pray in tongues and also pray with your understanding. Pray in tongues and also pray in your understanding. When we are in church, sing in tongues, sing with your understanding. So we minister to the Lord, we minister to one another, and then lastly, we minister to the lost. Paul talks about, you know, Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 24, that we minister to the lost through prophecy. By bringing out the heart of the Lord, the mind of God to others. To those that are lost. The Bible says that when prophecy brings out, you know, the content of the lost, they will fall down and repent of their sins and give their lives to Jesus. I remember going to a school and I was teaching and the Lord gave me the name of the girl, one of the girls that was seated right in front of me, her name and what she was about to do. God told me the girl standing right in front of you, her name is Rachel and she wants to take her life. So we use the gifts of the Spirit to minister to the world. I was standing here one time and I was preaching and I paused, pointed at the camera and said, there's somebody who wants to take their lives and I want you to know Jesus loves you. And there was a woman watching online and she was about to take her life. When she heard that, she was moved. She got into a car and drove to this place and gave her life to Jesus Christ. And this is the church that Jesus Christ is raising. And this is the church and this is the believer that you are this morning. And he will use you in healings, working of miracles as well. In conclusion, listen, brothers and sisters, a spirit-filled church is a community of believers under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will fill you and I to equip us to minister to the Lord through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you to stand to your feet and close your eyes.
This morning, God wants to fill you with his spirit. This morning, Jesus wants to equip you. He wants to enrich your fellowship with God. He wants to bring you to an intimate relationship with him. He wants to take your devotion to another level. With every eye closed, you are here and you're saying, Pastor Mumba, or you are in our South Shore campus, you're saying, Pastor Mumba, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in other tongues. I want to love the Lord in my worship. I want to be effective in my prayer. I want to be a blessing to the brother next to me, the sister next to me. I want the Holy Spirit to work through me. With every eye closed, I want you to walk to the front and we'll pray with you. The Lord will fill you with His Spirit. The Lord will empower you just like the believers in the book of Acts. He will fill you. He will increase your capacity to fellowship with Him. He will burn everything that hinders Him from working effectively in your life. Tongues are not a fearful thing. We are not supposed to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He's not here to harm us. He's here to comfort us, to guide us into all truth. We cannot ask for the Holy Spirit and be given a demon. We cannot pray in the name of Jesus and have the devil answer us. We ask in the name of Jesus and surely what only is of God is what is going to come our way. And right now, I sense such of the presence and the power of God over this place. And I know God is about to touch people. Now, if you're already filled with the Spirit, I want you gently to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Just begin to speak in other tongues right where you are. I want you to feel free to begin to communicate with God. I want you to feel free to worship the Lord in tongues. I want you to feel free to just love Him. And let me ask our, our ministers and leaders to just come and just help our brothers and sisters to just come and receive an impartation of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Listen, you don't have to be afraid. This is an opportunity for you to rise as a vessel that God is going to use. You don't know whom God is going to save through your life. But if you already feel, I want you to begin to pray right now. I want you to just begin to pray right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that your spirit will come like a cloud. He will come like a mighty rushing wind. He will come like a fire. He will descend like a cloud of power. The Lord out of the bellies of those that believe, let streams of living waters begin to flow. We pray in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, pray in the spirit. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed. Don't be alarmed, don't be offended. If you don't pray in tongues, just begin to worship God just for about 60 seconds. Just 60 seconds where you are. Raise your voice and just begin to flow with the spirit. If you feel like lifting your hands, do so. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Hey, Feel your people, God. You worthy, God. <laughs> the unchanging one. Oh, for we know <laughs> it pleases you, God. 
to fill us with your spirit. Go ahead and just begin to worship him. Go ahead and begin to love him. Continue.